Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Jesus Taxi. This is another episode that we're so excited to bring to you today. And it's a beautiful, clear blue sky in Castle Rock, Colorado. Sitting down with a new friend of mine. Her name is Cody Winslow. She's written a new book. So hang in there with us in this episode of the Jesus Taxi. Well, here I am. I'm going to flip the camera so you can see both of us. Cody and I are going for a ride. This is Cody Winslow. I'm Wayne Hansen. This is the Jesus Taxi. We're so excited to be having these conversations, talking about life and purpose and the person of Jesus Christ. And I met Cody at a pastor's prayer meeting last fall. And she had just written this book coming out of the pandemic. Cody Winslow, welcome to the Jesus Taxi. Thank you for having me. This is a fun thing we get to do. Of course, yes. And it's a little, it's a little crazy. So if I if I get nuts, you just tell me, and I can slow down or or stop or whatever, pick up stray animals, whatever whatever you you think is necessary. So tell me your background, Cody. So my background is in. Um, writing and editing and I did some project management in both uh, Christian education and also in higher education. Okay. Um, I started out studying journalism and came out of college doing radio. Nice. Um, in San Diego? In San Diego. Mm -hmm. Cool. What was and, the station? Uh, 100.7. Star. 100.7. The star. <laughs> yeah. So I was a radio awesome. producer and um, got drawn into education after I got married and started having kids and wanting to be able to be with them and, yeah. um, in their education journey. And so I kind of reinvented myself, became a school librarian. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. You don't seem like the librarian type. <laughs> so I was in the, again, my degrees in the arts, but I ended up in this, in this sort of science field. Um, but I got to spend a lot of time with the kids. Yeah. And uh, writing is important to me. Um, educating is important to me. So getting to, to spend time with the kids was really great. That's awesome. And, and so I moved from that into higher So you have kids. I have, I do. I have three kids of my own by birth, and I have two um, bonus kids by Ooh, marriage. Ooh, five kids! And wow. so five kids from twenty-three down to eleven. Uh, you one got girl, me beat. I've got one four. girl and four boys. I've got four kids. So, <laughs> so uh, keeps me on my toes. That's awesome. And married? I am married. I'm uh -huh. remarried. Uh -huh. um, and I live here in Castle Rock. And um, my husband uh, and I met about five years ago and blended our families together and. That has been a, an interesting journey. I'm sure you probably could write about that too. That is, that is something I pray about all the time. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, putting families together and uh, mixing your histories and coming up with new traditions and all those things, that's, that's powerful stuff. This, this is your new book. Tell us about uh, hope, the, the, the journal of hope here. So live, out, live Out Loud Hope, right? It's called Live It Out Hope. Live It Out Hope, okay. And it's a devotional journal, so um, this came out of, I've always wanted to, I've done publishing in different arenas, journalism, newspapers, magazines, um, done a lot of policy work when I was in higher education, yeah. um, but I wanted to write sort of what the Lord put on my heart. Which, right. Um, God, no, no constraints, right? No, you, and, and God gives us, I, I believe that we're stewards of our stories yes. that God gives us, and so um, we're really supposed to share them, and that's, that's really right. how the gospel goes forward, right? You're sharing what God has done in your life and how he how he worked in your life and that might help somebody else and so right and I've no, always felt that tug nobody can tell your story like you right that's right and so um, during the pandemic what really got my attention at the beginning because I I serve in a public service office where you know I'm in charge of what I look at it as like 110 families right these are the people that work for me and these are the people who have to go out and find daycare and they have to um, juggle responsibilities and stay cooped up and how do I they can't most of them can't work remote and so a lot of that sort of turmoil was in my face every day um, publicly in my job but then also our families you know we had the boys live two boys live at their other household half the time how do you juggle somebody's sick at this house this house and it was a lot um, but what I felt was just that pressure of people 
are losing hope. You know, they're losing yes. the ability to, to feel hopeful yeah. um, when there was something so uncertain. And it still stays with us now, this uncertainty. And so I kind of decided there wasn't any more time left. You know, God puts this call in my life to write and to use words um, in a powerful way for his glory. And I, I just decided that I was going to use that time to finally live out this dream of getting something published. That's and awesome. So that's where the book came from. Uh, my intent is for people to feel less alone. That's really cool. You know, um, that's really cool. And to me, that's the theme right now. Hope. People yeah. need to understand that there is something they can depend on. Yeah, I think I think it's it's kind of the uncertainty of the times that makes that w- that has made the pandemic so tough. And you're like, is it over? I think it's over. Maybe right. it's over. It doesn't right. seem like it's over. Maybe maybe it is. It's over in some places, but maybe not over in others. It keeps morphing. <laughs> yes, that's and that seems to be the problem, right? And every um, every day or other day or week, you know, we have a new set of things to adapt to, and I, that's one of the things that I I feel like hope needs practice because it it, it it builds a resilience muscle right, right. and so um, in the journal it's not just so it's 30 days of um, stories from my life yeah and then each chapter has an area to journal um, reflect reflect on the scripture that I share reflect on the story about hope the theme of hope and then kind of journal out what you're thinking yeah maybe what God's speaking to you and then the end is making a commitment so Hope takes practice, just yeah. like any other habit. Yeah. And so um, you you write a little commitment statement. I I commit to living out hope today by. Uh huh. For me, some of the examples I give in the introduction are, um, so I'm a I'm a mom and I'm having I'm having a tough time. And um, how do I commit to hope when I'm in the middle of a struggle with my kids or they're rebellious or you know whatever the things are? I I commit to hope by picking up the phone and letting somebody else build me back up I don't I don't suffer alone silently in my own struggle right I reach out yeah that to me is is perpetuating hope because I'm gonna get that from that relationship right hope mm-hmm. comes to me my book is in three sections it comes from redemption from Jesus Christ yeah it comes from revelation his word and it comes from relationship yeah and that's how we kind of live within each other's lives is we provide hope to one another we point each other to hope it's yeah. time for that. For sure. Um, I want to hear more about you being a public servant. But first, we're going to hear from our first sponsor on the Jesus Taxi is Lyft. Set your own hours and earn over 1600 bucks in your first month. Just drive 140 rides in 30 days and that money is guaranteed. Terms apply. Learn how to become a Lyft driver in Denver or whatever city you're watching from today. You can sign up today. Be your own boss. Applications are now open. Drivers earn tips and meet lots of interesting folks. Go to lift.com today and use my driver's referral code Wayne six eight seven one two. Start earning cash, and you'll be supporting the ministry, my family, all at the same time. Become a driver or get a ride right now with Lyft. All right, Cody, we're back. <laughs> we're back. Ad breaks in the car. How do That's you like cool. that? That's very cool. Yeah. So tell me, tell me a little bit about. Um, well, this is the Jesus taxi. I always love when yeah. people tell us how, what their thoughts on Jesus are. I know you're a believer, but how did you, what, what, what are your thoughts on Jesus and how he's perceived and how did you come to Jesus? Well, so my, my mom, uh, I give her credit for introducing me to Jesus. Uh, my parents uh, attended church when I was growing up. We went uh, to Evangelical Free Church uh, and non-denominational Bible believing Bible teaching church Mm -hmm. my mom was the church secretary at one point oh wow my dad on weekends um, out when he wasn't in the Navy was cleaning you know cleaning the church and so you used to crazy pastors doing crazy things like the Jesus oh and we did like in high school we did the car rallies so I'm used to you know scavenger hunts in the car (laughs) that's Um, awesome it it was um, something though for me that hit at a very young age I would say four or five um, I didn't really realize what it was until much later yeah But my mom would pray with us at night, my sister and I, and I would pray every single night that Jesus would come into my heart. Yeah, right. Because I didn't know what that... Just in case. I didn't... Exactly. (laughs) I didn't know what that meant. My dad was in the Navy, and he was gone a lot. And so if this is my heavenly father, right? Right. I thought maybe he's going to go too. And so Mm. every single day, I would pray that same prayer. I was just... I wanted to be sure that I was sure. And... Yeah. um, 
Have you ever had the opportunity to lead other people to Jesus? I have. I have. I did. Um, I did a, a lot of time with women's ministry. Oh, cool. And small groups and uh, things when I was in California. Well, maybe and I'll have you uh, lead the people when they're watching later at the end of the show great. if you'd like to. That That'd would be, be great. great. That'd be awesome. I what? did that in the back of my book. I, I included a section called Eternal Hope. And awesome. It, and it goes through Romans Road and, and teaches them through Scripture how to have that personal relationship. Yeah. So as a Christian, as a believer, someone who walks with Jesus, what do you think people get wrong about Jesus? Like what, mm. the, people have a lot of conceptions about Jesus, but what do you think people are getting wrong about him? Well, I think what they get wrong is the, is that he's like us. Mm. <laughs> so, so I, the church I went to in California for a long time, um, would, I would say it was pretty uh, strict and the rules were the focus, right? So that right. religious sort of piece. And I, I think that people get wrong that Jesus is religious because really he came to do something for on our behalf right? and to relate to us to make and to make that relationship with God possible. For sure. And so um, I think they miss the fact that humans misrepresent him often. Mm-hmm. And so where do we have to look for that? We have to look to scripture to really understand who Jesus is. Right. Um, because we, we, we fail all the time. And so for me, I went to a very uh, a strict church. And I even, even after knowing Jesus from a very young age, got him very wrong mm-hmm. um, in the way I spoke to my parents, my friends, trying to save people, you know, all of this. <laughs> right. Um, and very aggressive about it. Yeah. Um, I remember calling my parents one time when I had... Um, my kids were really young and saying, you know, don't send them Easter baskets. Easter's about Jesus, you know, and, oh, wow. and like, and really just getting so caught up in, right. in that feeling that you had to do all everything right. Right. And I think that's what people get wrong about Jesus. And that's not Jesus very, that's here. not very loving, is it's it? It's grace. He's grace upon right. grace and he's here to forgive and he's here to teach us, which is teach us how to live. Right. right? So Christians kind of send the message that once you become a, a Christian or you once you start following Jesus that he's a, just a big old buzzkill and you can't yeah. do anything fun anymore yep. and you, you can't laugh there's no joy <laughs> it's all over you know um, and that to me that's the furthest thing from the truth I, I absolutely agree with that in fact I um, probably down the road uh, I may do a, a memoir and um, I already have in mind it'll be about God's grace and I say that because I think I actually learned more about God's grace through what I thought at the time was one of the biggest sins I could ever commit, was which was getting divorced. And um, there was some abuse in my last marriage, and um, I finally, I, I finally got the courage up to uh, not allow that anymore and move forward. But it was very trepidatious because of the way the church preaches about it, yeah. and the way the church treats well, you. Some and, churches teach that that's a perpetual sin. Yeah. And once you've done it, you that's you're it. pretty much damned until you can that that spouse like, dies like and the, you can confess the that Scarlet sin. Or, D is what right? I call it. You yeah. know, and um, yeah. I actually learned and have gotten closer to Jesus my savior after this what i thought was the biggest sin i could commit mm. you know as this as if there's levels to sin right? right and so i thought this was this this giant thing i let god down right and god has just met me every step of the way that's and right. restored me and redeemed me over and over again because that's who he is mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but i had this misconception that i had to perform in order to earn right to right, get him to love you right, right to earn that love right and you know that's a human concept yeah that's what we do in human relationships yeah that's what i love to say to people is you you can't earn god's love he already loves you yeah <laughs> he just wants you to come to him and and just you know begin to start the relationship and then he'll clean you up he'll That's start right. helping you with your behavior problems or your past or your hurts or your pains or you know what whatever you're going through addictions alcoholism like name name the the difficulty he's there for us for sure so i think the importance of god's word is that his ways and his thoughts are higher than ours right and so <clears throat> if if we rely on our own thoughts, then our path is going to get way off. Right. So I think that sure foundation comes from going, you know what? I don't have to have all the answers. Mm-hmm. I don't have to have all of that. I don't even have to have to, all of it memorized. I can go on a repeated relationship and find sort of that nugget for the next step. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be something that... Um, You know, it's not something that I have to get puffed up about. I have all this knowledge about religious knowledge and I'm going to become, you know, this religious guru or 
or I'm gonna live in this way that's always right you know yeah um, it's grace and so I think the importance of his word is it reveals how to have that life yeah one step at a time for sure right? and yet it's not about intellectualism because Jesus did say unless you come as a little child you'll, you won't see the kingdom of heaven so there's something about a childlike faith and trust and I, I don't have to have everything figured out you know what I mean? You don't. And I think that that's the beauty of it is, and I find that when I read scripture, especially when you read a scripture again. Yeah. And it says, it's like, it, it's, it's, it's different or new or fresh to you. Yeah. Right. You, it's that, it's almost like that imaginative heart of a child. For sure. Where you come and you see more of what he has to say. Yep. He reveals himself to us like in layers or pages, right? Mm -hmm. Just more and more all the time. All right. Well, it's time for another ad break, everybody. To, I'm going to tell you about my friend, John Boyd, the cool car guy, started a website called topcarbid.com. You can use my referral code on topcarbid.com forward slash or ref slash Pastor Wayne H slash and um, you can uh, have your own little membership there to the top car bid and instead of having to pay for your ads you pay for a subscription service you can blog about cars you have slots that you can if you if you sell a lot of used cars up to 10 a year um, you don't have to keep paying for ad space and it's a great um, website for people who are interested in cars. So sell your car, talk about cars, promote other interests, join the game that pays for a modest annual fee. You can list an unlimited amount of vehicles unlike Craigslist or Auto Trader. Build a profile with a link to your business website such as LinkedIn, Facebook, or your own website. As a member, you can write your own articles about what you like or don't like about your car or any other interests related to the automotive industry. Go to topcarbid.com to beat the classifieds game. Earn up to $50 and more for each friend that joins the site on your recommendation. Join TopCarBid.com today to sell your car, promote your interest, and earn cash fast. And we'll see you out there on the open road. All right. So, yeah, are you a driver? What, what do you drive? I do. Oh, my goodness. Right now I have a Subaru Legacy. Uh-huh. What year? Uh, it's, I bought, okay, I bought it the, the day that car lots closed down. For COVID of 2020, it was two o'clock in the afternoon, and I had, I had a Honda Passport previously, and it was really too big to fit in my garage. Yeah. And so I had to find. I was like, I'll go back to a sedan. It'll be better gas mileage, all this stuff. Right. And I'm there in the afternoon, the first day of COVID. The first day they're going to be required to shut down, and they're like, you got to buy a car by 6 p.m. or like we're closing. We have to close <laughs> down. Like you can't. Come so in. you bought it and parked it. So I bought it, and um, and. I do like the idea. A lot of people in Colorado drive Subaru um, yeah. because I can have a car that has all-wheel drive. Yep. Um, I'm still, I'm still missing the mini, the mini SUV that helps you cart all the kids around and. Right, with five kids, I think you would miss that. that for sure. Um, so it still takes some getting used to, but um, my husband is uh, is into cars. He had um, a 280Z was like oh, his nice. favorite uh, car that he owned uh, for a long time, and That's awesome. worked on that. So he's a he's a car aficionado yes i enjoy cars I, I do some fix and flips i like motorcycles quite a bit too so that i've I, you know i'm from detroit michigan so my dad was a pastor and at uh, 12 mile and phillips right in the inner city with a lot of auto workers in the church you know and so I, everyone and everyone in detroit knows how to change their oil, own <laughs> oil you know there's a lot of normal stuff that you would you know people that take a certain amount of pride in that city for doing your own yeah. auto maintenance you know so I have a natural um, even I don't know if it's interest it's just a, it's been culturally inbred into me being a Detroiter yeah but um yeah yeah cars are interesting and they they are important and you never pray like you pray when you have <laughs> car trouble you know what I'm saying? Well, and you know, for me, my office is the DMV, so oh. we're in charge of uh, all of that stuff. We've oh, some, yeah. Some uh, really unique uh, and interesting customers, you know, <laughs> that we have come into our office. For sure. But we've uh, we've actually spent this time trying to take and turn around. Uh, I, I, ju I just believe in the ability to be... Um, some of the business principles of the private sector and I've been able to bring them over to this office and what's really cool about it is we um, we've been able to turn around the 
perception of our office that you know in the kids movies they they make the DMV a sloth you know yeah the red tape and how well it feels like it all. when you're in there when you're in there and you're waiting in line <laughs> well we don't really have a lot of lines anymore yeah and, um, well yeah. you changed the scheme we did here in Douglas County I noticed that you do you have the kiosk yep and then you can go to one of three places and that seems to cut down on the congestion we have three we have three locations and we have um, I think six now kiosks where you can do renewals at grocery stores at the King Super I love stores. those. Um, so are we, those everywhere in Colorado? Or is that just Douglas uh, County? Different counties have um, have partnered uh, to do that. Not all counties, but yeah. we have, I think, around six of them. That has streamlined so. the whole process of titling and yeah, renewing your Yeah, don't come in. Like, tags. if you don't have to come in, don't come in. Yeah, I mean, no kidding. So, you, so it really has... I think made it more convenient for customers. That's awesome. How appropriate that we that, that we would talk about that. Talk about cars. Yeah. yeah. We what try to we get back out there and, and live your life and you have your car and go do your thing. You know, instead of waiting in our office. What do most people forget when they come into the DMV? <laughs> What's the most common uh, thing that they forget? Well, a lot of times, depending on if they've um, brought that little card, the courtesy notice that you get in the mail. Yes. Yeah. Um, whether they checked whether their emissions are due. Right? Oh, because right, right. that's every other due, year, right? And you need to bring your insurance card in most cases. Um, yep. So, um, yeah, we've tried to cut down even on, um, we have a liaison position, so in the lobby, they can get their paperwork checked. So if they don't mm -hmm. have everything, they don't get a ticket and get in line, they can go be told before they waited an hour, get up to the counter. Yes. It's like, let us help you with that ahead of time. But our website is the best place to get the information. We have... An, a, a very modern website that that gives us really much good. information. So, what what's next on the horizon? Are you are you going to write more books? Do you feel like there's there's more in your heart? I think you talked about writing a memoir. I, I think I'll eventually write the memoir. Um, this year, I actually am working on a business book um, about workplace culture. So, oh, okay. Um, how to make it more than a poster on the wall? So yep. people, you know, you you put these values on the wall, and then a lot of times that's as far as it goes. And so. We're going to kind of take our office and make it a case study, and a colleague of mine and I are going to uh, write what we've done for the last um, five to seven years. So I'm excited. I've done some consulting in that area, and so I'm just going to share some of the principles and what's worked. Yeah. And then... Um, and then I'm actually uh, starting tomorrow, so you can actually pray for me. This is my prayer request. Yeah. I have been asked by one of my friends at Plum Creek to um, teach my book as a Bible study. So awesome. She invited me into her small group, and so it's 17 women, which I was going to tell her, that's not a very small group. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have started writing a Bible study companion. Cool. Um, so we're going to pilot it, and we're going to have women's fellowship, and we're going to yeah. talk about hope not just in the practice of the book, but also in just what's going on in people's lives right now. So I'm right. I'm really excited um, to start that, and I'm writing it as a five-week Bible study, so an introduction, and then the book is a 30-day journal, so um, breaking it down, they'll do seven days each week, and then we'll get together and do our study together. That's awesome. Um, so so you might that. make like a kind of a, a study guide to go yeah. with it. Yeah, 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 that's really, really cool. So I start that tomorrow, um, so that's my prayer request. I'm going to see how that goes. I've always um, loved to study the Bible myself. That's awesome. Um, um, and I've been in a part of many, many um, small groups before. Yeah. Um, and I've taught at conferences and things, but this is a real intimate way to, to share what the book's about. And That's awesome. Yeah. I have a I have a locals question, a quiz. See if you okay. see if you know what this <laughs> is. We have sculptures, just like Denver. A part of the the city government goes towards sculptures and. Uh, public art. Oh, okay. Do you know? Do no, you, you know what this I, is? I do not know what that is. Oh, I can. I can be the one that tells you what that I mean, is. It looks like it could be a rocket or I, wheels. When or? I first saw it, I thought it was a tiki, like a like a like a modern okay. looking tiki god. Once I tell you, you won't be able to unsee it. <laughs> It's a train, train to heaven. It's yes, a train. it's a train going up to heaven. That's so cool. So. What better place for us to talk about our final section here? Yeah. Um, how do we get to heaven? How do we how do we make make that exchange? I I like to teach um, something that I, that I use from auto racing STP. Okay. You know how do you begin the relationship with Jesus? It's saying sorry, mm -hmm. thank you, and please yeah. STP. Love that. And inviting him in. But maybe, I knew you shared the gospel in, in your book. I'm going to turn you loose and just want you talking to that camera to someone okay. who, might be, who might be watching the show or watching the YouTube channel. And they're like, 
man, this Cody girl, she seems like she's got a couple things figured out. Maybe I can know God like that. Well, if you're out there and you're watching this show, which is really cool, um, something we all have in common is that we've all made mistakes. And um, something that I learned as a young girl is that uh, God is there for that. And uh, what he did was he sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And what that means is that he took our place and he redeemed or, or took the place of um, the payment that we would have to give back for, for what we've done wrong. And so that punishment is taken care of. And so if you're out there and uh, you understand that you've done something wrong in your lifetime, I mean, more than once, all of us, um, all you have to do is recognize that and tell God that you're sorry. And after that, um, it's about um, having that personal relationship with him. And you find out about that in his word, which is, is the Bible. And so he helps you learn how to walk with him and how to take those steps one step at a time on how how to live life and he gives you those those tools um, and as pastor wayne said um, in that prayer that conversation with god you're going to want to tell him thank you because um, it's an indescribable gift what he's done because it gets i get choked up even <laughs> thinking about it um, that's awesome that's it's awesome. a very special thing and and once you've done that once you've acknowledged um tell someone else um, because that proclaiming of what he's done in our, our life is what um, is what overcomes hardship in this world. Um, something I wanted to share just in closing is my what I call my life verse or one of the verses in the Bible that speaks the most to me is Revelation 12, 11. It says, we overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb. So the blood of the lamb is Jesus, Jesus dying on the cross and the word of our testimony, which is our story. And so if if you're coming to faith and then God does these neat things in your life as you learn to grow with him, share it with someone else because that's how that's how we perpetuate this in the world and it's how hope is um, hope goes forward. That's on that's awesome. Hey, if you're watching, you can pray it with that prayer with me right now. Wherever you are, stop what you're doing. If you're if you're listening on your phone or you're going for a walk or you're busy doing something, just stop what you're doing. Just create a holy space between you and God right now and pray this prayer right after me. Say, Dear Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe God raised you from the dead, according to the scriptures. Please come into my heart. Be my Savior. And be my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, the Bible says that if you pray that prayer, you've been born again. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. You've become a new creation in Christ. And we're so excited for you. <laughs> and uh, we, I know Cody would love to hear from you on her webpage. And I would love to hear from you. And that's that brings me to my final sponsor, which is Summit Church of Douglas County. You can go to our church website and contact us. If you prayed the prayer, we'd love to hear about that. You can call us at 303-524-4000. Uh, um, you can go to the ministry website. Go to mysummitchurch.com. If you want to support the ministry of of course you can do that but it's not about money right now this is about you knowing the person of Jesus and uh, understanding that he loves you so much and he wants you to begin a relationship with him and so pick up this journal and ah, there she's got it right there awesome and I've got my own copy over here everybody and it's it's on is it on Amazon it's on Amazon and mm -hmm. then uh, they can find it easily on my website CodyWinslow.com CodyWinslow.com well, it's been wonderful to have you in the Jesus Taxi. Thank you. Guys, God bless you. We'll see you next time.